Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Messing with the Landlord. I rent a room in suburban Phoenix. The landlord lives with. We've been getting highs of 110 and lows of 90. I work in the evenings at a factory, while my landlord works during the day. I've been setting the AC at a comfortable temperature of 85 during the day, but my landlord stopped me from doing so. He said that using the AC at 110 costs too much and damages the AC unit. I told him I'm happy to pay extra, but he wouldn't budge. What's more is that my landlord himself turns on the AC when he arrives home and sets it to 70. He says that since it's only 90 outside, it doesn't cost much or damage the unit. Now, I grew up in another country without an AC. I know a lot of survival tricks, but these are best suited for stone houses, not furnished and carpeted ones. However, I care more about my landlord's wishes than his house. So here's what I do. I walk around with a red towel draped on my neck. The water gets into the carpet and might eventually cause odors, but I must abide his wishes. During daytime, I sleep by wetting my t-shirt. The water gets into the mattress and might eventually ruin it, but I must abide his wishes. I open the windows and hang a red mesh to let a cool breeze in. It might damage the windows still and attract some bugs, but hey, the company is nice. I also take long cold showers throughout the day. The cherry on top is that I got this room off Craigslist and didn't sign a lease. It's all cash. The landlord only has a bond of $100, which he'd probably never give back, even if I left the house in an immaculate condition. I think I'll just bail if he ever catches on. The next story is called Three Days Instead of Ron. I have been working with this company for three years already. I work in retail and our managers are always micromanaging and will write us up for the most mundane things. My days off are scheduled for every first day and I was already feeling ill days before my day off. I had waited until my day off to rest and hoped I could feel better. But when the end of the day comes, I still feel sick. So I informed my boss and asked if I can use my excess hours and not come to work the next day since I am so sick. Our company never pays for our overtime but expects us to work 12 hours every day and per day they will give us 2 hours access. And since I never requested until that particular day, I had racked up 120 access hours overtime which can be used for days off etc. I had only requested one day extra off which would amount to 10 hours to be deducted from my long extra hours accumulated. But my boss threatens to write me up if I don't provide a doctor's note. She informed me that even if I provide one, she won't deduct it from my hours. So I complied and went to the doctor and got a medical note. I was given a 3 day recommended rest. I sent it to my manager. She had no choice but to let me have 3 additional more days paid sick leave and I won't be back to shop until Monday all instead of just giving me a day to rest. On Saturday, the shop had a lot of issues without me and my reliever was having a hard time coping with the work. My manager called me, but I don't respond to any of her messages nor calls and just rested well. On Monday, I reported the company to labor claims. Now they are forced to pay me that 120 hours overtime. Checkmate. The third story is called Can't Fire Me. Sister-in-law worked as a partner in a large healthcare consulting company, which was then bought out by a larger firm. As far as the negotiations for the buyout, one of the provisions was that the incoming partners could not be laid off. The new company, apparently, didn't want the healthcare consulting part of the business, which was her main focus, so they wouldn't allow her to write new contracts. She had a very good reputation and knew a lot of people in the industry, so she got a contract signed for millions of dollars. But her company refused to let her manage it, so it was cancelled. For the next 12 years, she didn't have any work to do. She would only go to the office for postage and printing. She spent the afternoons going to the movies or playing golf. Every now and then, she would have a meeting with her boss, who would try to convince her to quit. 
She would always say the company was not offering enough money. This went on until she eventually got the mandatory retirement age and was forced to retire. The next story is called No Work To Do. I have a very good friend who maliciously complied her way into getting paid for essentially doing absolutely nothing for 19 months. It was a government job, no surprise there. She and her colleague worked in a state office that kept track of plague cases among prairie dog towns. They were super busy trapping and testing all summer. But once winter comes, prairie dogs hibernate, so they ran out of work. They told their boss via email that there was no more to do for the season that first autumn. And their boss responded by telling them to stand by for reassignment. So they did, for months. They didn't want to be accused of theft by just clocking in and out and leaving. So in the very beginning, they organized some storage spaces very slowly, cleaned their office several times, organized paperwork and that sort of thing. When they ran out of stuff to do, they started sleeping, doing schoolwork, Sudoku, what have you. Initially, they slept in turns, so someone was always available if anyone came to check in on them. But when it became obvious no one was coming, they stopped bothering. By summer the following year, when the prairie dogs came out of hibernation and she thought her work might resume, the whole office, all the employees in every department received an email from some high up informing everyone that her particular department had been cut. I don't know if it was unfunded or they got all the data necessary the previous summer or that particular pet project of some politician was forgotten about. But somewhere along the line, the state fish and game axed the project for whatever reason. Nothing was mentioned in the email about her job status. So she and her coworker continued to go in and do nothing. They made sure the security people saw them periodically throughout the day and they were on camera. Anyone above them paying attention would have noticed, but no one ever took the time. They dodged folks in the other departments for fear they'd get told on and just minded their own business. They rarely had much interaction with other employees anyway. Eventually she ran into her boss at a show and she asked my friend where she had found new work. My friend didn't lie and said she still worked there. Where? Where you left them? Her face was amazing when she put the pieces together and realized what was going on. The jig was up and she and her colleague were let go that following morning via email before they went in. Because they had technically worked there for so long, I think two years was the threshold. They both got a little severance package. Neither of them used unemployment since they had both been feeling like the gravy train was sure to derail any day. So they had new jobs lined up. The last story is called Rewrite It. In my sophomore year of high school, our English class had to write an essay about a book. Can't remember which book, but it doesn't matter. When our essays were handed back, no one had gotten a good grade on it. The teacher told us that we had to revise our essays based on the corrections we were given and then turn them in again. She wanted three copies. The original, the revised one with corrections we made highlighted and a final copy without the highlights. I look at mine and compare it to everyone else's essay. Everyone else has the teacher's comments written in red, things underlined, stuff crossed out. Mine just had my grade. It was a D. So I talked to my teacher after class and asked her what I needed to fix since my essay had none of her comments. Her response was that I had to rewrite my essay. Again, I asked what I needed to change to get a better grade. She told me that it wasn't good and that I needed to rewrite the entire essay. I rewrote my entire essay, word for word, twice. One for the highlighted copy and one for the final draft. I highlighted random words and sentences on the highlighted copy. But again, it was the same as the one that was given my D. A week later, we got our grades back and mine had improved to a B. The annoying part was that I couldn't even call her out on it because my school had a plagiarism policy where you can't submit the same assignment twice because that would be cheating. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. Also, if you want to support me further, check out the channel membership or Patreon. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.